We don't, we don't have every website for all of the organizations in our database, but that does prove to be helpful for some. I, however, would recommend going to our search page, which is found right at the top of the home page. Clicking search will take you to our search page where you'll see three different filter tabs split up into geography, organization, and financials. If you are looking for a specific organization, you can still use the keyword search to enter the name of the organization or the EIN. It's located right here at the top of the screen. We also have a people search functionality. So if you are trying to find all of the organizations an individual is connected to through uh, 990 data and various other sources of data, like the nonprofit themselves, as Aaron showed us earlier, coming to us and obtaining a seal of transparency, you could use our people search to do that. The geography tab is split up into state zip code and zip code radius, metro statistical area, city, and county filter options. At the bottom of each tab, you will see a clear all button. That is going to apply to every tab in our search page. So if you ever need to start a search from scratch, simply hit clear all on any one of these three tabs of information. The organization tab is where you'll be able to filter by uh, cause areas, sub cause areas, IRS subsections, affiliation types, number of employees, IRS form types, and audits performed. Uh, we also have specific exclusions. So if you only want to return live active charities in your search set, I just want to call special attention to these two checkboxes. All of our search filters respond in real time, meaning after you have updated a search filter, you will see search results populate in real time on the page. As Aaron mentioned earlier, there are over 2.6 million organizations in our database. However, the amount of active organizations currently sits at 1.7. We talked about the GuideStar profile levels earlier, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. But one important call out is if you want to ensure you are talking to an organization or working with an organization that has updated information in GuideStar, a SEAL is a great indicator that that is the case. Organizations have to update their profiles within two years of obtaining a seal to keep their seal. You can see the GuideStar seals of transparency right on the search page, indicating whether they've achieved gold, platinum, silver, bronze. Uh, also just wanna call out that our seal holders, in order to obtain a bronze, need to have updated contact information. So a good indicator that you are working with updated data and is to find yourself a bronze seal holder and you will find updated contact information as well. The last tab are our financial filters. Now, we, these are split up into revenue category, expense category, and asset category. These may be a little in the weeds for your day-to-day -day use. I, they can operate with a slide rule. As you slide on the bar, you'll see the uh, dollar amount change. I find that that can be quite inconvenient trying to get to an exact amount like $1 million, a quick shortcut, you can simply highlight over the box where it says zero or max and type directly into it. A nice shortcut is to simply hit 1M and it automatically completes to 1 million. Same goes for billion and it would be K for thousands. So just a quick search tip here from the search page. I'm going to hit my clear all button to make sure I've cleared out all of my pre-selected search filters and from here, we're going to do a quick search to find an organization. And the organization we're looking for today is the Cleveland International Film Festival. I type the organization name into the search bar and hit enter, and I'm returned a list of organizations that somewhat match the keywords I've entered. I can see the organization I'm looking for appears right here at the top with their platinum seal. If they have an alias or another name they are known by, that will also be shown here in the search results, as well as their location, their EIN, bridge number, their IRS subsection, and more or less keywords from their mission statement where our keywords may have been found in the search as well. You'll also see gross receipts, assets, and a quick blurb on GuideStar Charity Check. It's really up to you how you want to open the profile. You can simply click the name here on the search page and it will open up within the search window. I personally find it easier to open new profiles in new tabs. Simply for organization, if you need to have more than one tab open at a time, you can do that easily. When you land on a GuideStar nonprofit profile page, you will see in the header the name of the organization, their profile seal level, plain as day in the top left corner. You'll also find the GuideStar charity check information in the top right corner. This is going to be your source for verifying that an organization is in good standing with the IRS, that they were on 
the most recent BMF that they are Pub78 verified, that they do not appear on an OFAC list or had a, have a revocation status, uh, any of those red flags you would see here. We also have a summary report available for Charity Check, as well as a PDF report. I find this particularly helpful if you need a time date stamp indicating that an organization was in good standing with the IRS, you can run this PDF report for the Charity Check and simply save it locally. I also wanna point out the PDF button in the top right corner underneath your login name. This is the Pro PDF Report. I'm just gonna exit out of the Charity Check Report. The Pro PDF Report is a local PDF that you can save on your machine that includes all of the data contained in the GuideStar profile. So that's going to include the Charity Check information, financial trends analysis information, mission statement, contact data, any relevant program metrics, uh, all of the information you find on a GuideStar profile, you would find in a GuideStar Pro PDF. Now these can be quite long, depending on how much information is in the nonprofit's profile page. You see here it took about 20 seconds to load here on my screen. It's probably gonna have uh, maybe 15 to 30 pages, Ah, 25, perfect. They, I've seen some get as long as 60 pages, so just know it can take a moment uh, to generate this pro PDF report, but you'll see it's formatted nicely for you, be able, for you to be able to go through, quickly ensure all of your com compliance information, find your programs and results overviews, et cetera, et cetera. Back to the nonprofit profile page. For navigating the remainder of the page, you can use these four tabs to jump between summary, programs, financials, and operations. They all appear on the same page, so you can simply scroll up and down on the page to see all four sections. The summary section is where you'll find information like the mission statement, updated contact information, if we have it available, would be found here. If you need an organization's 990s, we keep all of the 990s we have in our history available to download. You'll see that some organizations choose to upload their 990s instead of waiting for the IRS to send them to GuideStar. You'll also find links to social media, as well as several other identifying information like the EIN, the bridge number, cause area, NAICS code, etc. The program section is where you're going to see more narrative information. This is going to be details on what types of programs an organization provides, where they provide them, and if they've chosen to share results, you'll find that information here as well from our common results catalog. Please note that only gold and platinum seal holders will have uh, shared this level of information. Not every organization has a GuideStar seal, so you may see this empty for many profiles. But if it is a gold or platinum seal holder, you'll have an opportunity to look a little deeper into the programs that an organization offers and how they chart their impact. We ask these same five questions to every nonprofit who completes their profile to give you a sense as to uh, the goals they're trying to accomplish and how they intend to accomplish them. The next section would be the financial section. This is where you're going to see a visual breakdown of revenue versus expenses by year. There is a slide rule at the bottom that allows you to update the report in real time. You'll notice the chart on the left-hand side updates as I move the slide rule. You can also hover your mouse anywhere in the chart to see the data report back in real time. If we have down, uh, audited financial data, you can download that report here and also see an organization's fiscal year. As you scroll down through the financial section, you'll see different ratios like liquidity, months in cash, fringe rate, funding sources, access, and liabilities. And finally, you'll arrive down here at some of the financial scan data that you're probably familiar with. We have a revenue and expenses tab, a balance sheet tab, and the financial trends analysis. The financial trends analysis would be those financial scan features you may be familiar with. This is where you will see specific business model indicators like profitability, revenue composition, and expense composition over a five-year history. It's important to note that we would only be able to show this information if we have digitized 990 data. Same with the Pro PDF. If we don't have digitized 990 data, you would not see that Pro PDF option available or any data down here in the financial trends analysis. I also want to point out, excuse me, 
the download data option available on each of these tabs. This is going to download the data you see here directly into Excel. If you need it for a different fiscal year date, you can update the date before downloading. This would allow you to build your own graphs, put your own presentations together if you so choose, uh, including the financial trends analysis. There is a view full report option, which would print all of this information available in the financial trends analysis in a PDF that you can save locally. As you continue scrolling down the page, you'll find yourself at our operations section. This is where you'll find information on government, governance, governance practices, uh, who the executive director is, board members, highest paid employees, if we have that. Again, all available to download to you if you would like the data in Excel. And you can also see the last time it was updated to make sure you're working with accurate board members. Board leadership practices, if we have them directly from the nonprofit, again, this would likely be a seal holder rather than somebody who does not have a GuideStar nonprofit seal. If we have demographics information, this, would, this is we're finding to be more and more important in the nonprofit world is that I diversity, equity, and inclusion data. Uh, information on the employees of the organization, not the populations that they serve. If an organization has chosen to divulge this information through our profile program, you'll find it here under the operations tab, as well as diversity strategies, and lastly, contractor data. Not every organization reports contractor data, but some find it helpful to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the profile page to find it. I mentioned earlier, it is perfectly acceptable to simply right click and open in a new tab to compare organizations. It does require a lot of scrolling back and forth, especially if, you're, if your interest is in comparing financial data. One tool we make available to our pro users is the peer analysis tool. The peer analysis tool is going to allow you to compare the financial trends analysis metrics of up to five organizations at once. To do that, you would simply be here on the search screen, click the Add to Peer Analysis button. You'll see a little window pop up identifying any organizations you've elected to add to your peer analysis. I'm going to choose just a few here. Similar to other features in GuideStar Pro, an organization will need to have digitized 990 data in order to be added to the peer analysis feature. We'll just start with three for now. When you're ready, you click the View Peer Analysis button that appeared in that window, and it will open in a new tab. You will see that each organization is listed with a number next to it. That number correlates with a column below. So organization one being Cleveland, two, Santa Barbara, three, New York, et cetera. We put a median and average score together for the organizations that you've elected to compare. We also notate any negative trends, any potential red flags with red font, as you'll see in some places here in the business model indicators and capital structure indicators. This is also available either to download directly into Excel with the download button or to print in a PDF report if you simply want to save a local copy. At any time, you can remove organizations from your peer analysis or remove them all by clicking the Clear All option. A new feature that we just made available last week is the Cohort Analysis feature. So very similarly to the Peer Analysis feature, you will have the opportunity to create a cohort of organizations. You can have up to 2,000 organizations in a cohort, and all it requires is to simply check off and this is not best practice, I'm just checking off every single uh, organization here in my search set, which is 680, and to create a cohort with all of those organizations. Now you can name the cohort, so I'm just gonna name this Film Festivals uh, 12319. And you'll see the peer analysis window, peer comparison pop back up. You'll see my cohort here at the bottom, I can now select individual organizations to compare to the cohort. This may be especially valuable as you're vetting organizations to find and create cohorts of similar organizations, perhaps using IRS subsection, any kind of geographic radius, or specifically NTEE codes, cause areas and sub-cause areas. After you've elected 
which organizations you want to compare, you would simply choose the peer analysis button again. And it's going to combine the averages and medians of the cohort that I created. So you'll see very similar to the peer analysis, I have my three rows, one, two, and three, which correlate to specific organizations in columns one, two, and three. I see my peer median, meaning the median of the three individual organizations, and the cohort median of the 425 organizations I added to my cohort. As you scroll down, you'll have all of those financial trends analysis metrics that you will see on an individual organization's profile page. This also can be downloaded into Excel or printed in a PDF report to save locally. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of all of my screens here. Clear everything there. The last thing I'd like to share today is the organization downloads feature. At some point, you may find it useful to download information on many organizations at once into Excel. Aaron had a slide earlier that shared, uh, you can download up to 55 fields from each nonprofit into an Excel file. You can download up to 5,000 organizations each month. It is a use it or lose it scenario in that if you uh, only download three one month, you do not get the remaining 4,997 carried over to the next month. It also resets on the first of every month. So if I download 5,000 organizations on January 31st, the next day on February 1st, I can download 5,000 more. To download organizations, there is a download all option. If you want to download all in a search set, you can also download individual organizations. I'm just going to download all. A pop-up will appear showing you how many organizations were added to your download queue. If you have other organizations in your download queue, you will see the total here as well. I can choose to download all of them now, or I can go to my download queue and edit it from there. To get to your download queue, simply click on the arrow next to your name, go to My Account, find GuideStar Pro, and Download Queue. On this screen, you'll see how many of your 5,000 each month you have left. If you've downloaded any organizations in your history, you'll see when those files were created. You have 30 days to download and save a local copy. There's also a list that names each of the organizations that are in your current download queue. You can sort it by organization name, EIN, city, state, zip, or when they were added. And lastly, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see which fields are going to be included in that org download. When you are ready to download, simply click the download data button. You'll see your new download appear in the download history section. It can take 10, 15 minutes to download a file locally. You will actually receive an email uh, at the email address you use to sign into GuideStar when your file is ready. You can then jump back to this screen through GuideStar to download the file. There will also be a link in that email that will take you directly to the screen. You will then have the option to download that locally, save it, and continue your work. That concludes the demo for today. Aaron, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and allow you to close us out. All right, thanks, Billy. Sorry, I was on mute, so it took me just a second to get back on. Um, before I uh, make a really quick announcement, I'm just wondering if anyone uh, wanted to ask any questions while we have uh, Billy on the line here. I realize it's a ton of information to go through and there's a lot of moving parts in GuideStar uh, profiles. So if there's anything you wanna see again or have a question on something more specifically, um, go ahead and um, chat that or just yell it out is totally fine as well. Again, this is being recorded, so you'll have access to the demo that um, Billy just did in addition to the slides that I provided that had uh, some of the more contextual information at the beginning. Um, okay, so no questions. 